Hi, I'm Joel Richardson, and this is The Underground. Welcome to this week's episode of The Underground, a program that explores the testimony of the biblical prophets, the gospel of Jesus Christ, current events, and how all of these things relate to you and me. Now, I'm very excited to be back. Uh, This is actually the first show that I have recorded in 2017. I've had a lot of people uh, emailing and sending comments on my website saying, Joel, have you stopped doing The Underground? And uh, I've not stopped doing it. I just took a few weeks off at the end of the year here. Uh, Had a really, really exhausting, busy, busy year, Uh, probably from August until about the middle of December. I was traveling and gone from home pretty close to half the time. So uh, many of you know I have five children. And uh, so my wife obviously mans the fort while I'm gone. And of course, my wife uh, also has some uh, chronic pain issues and severe environmental allergies and different things. So it makes it difficult. And uh, it's just been it's been an exhausting, difficult year. I mean, we've been blessed. We are blessed. Uh, But nevertheless, it's been exhausting. And then at the end of the year, I actually got sick for a couple weeks. And so I just said, you know, I'm going to take a few weeks off, and I hope that's okay, but I am excited to be back. Now, before I jump into uh, the announcement that I want to make this week, I want to take a little bit of time to discuss some upcoming projects that I have this year. You know, it's it's in light of um, really having, again, probably the busiest year of my life, uh, 2016, in terms of just projects and traveling and preaching and teaching and traveling and uh, just doing all sorts of things. I'm really striving to um, cut down dramatically on my travel this next year. Now, of course, I travel and speak in churches and do seminars and and so forth uh, throughout the United States, North America. But a big part of what I do is travel internationally, leadership training, working with some of the ministries that I'm in partnership with, um, a lot of stuff that is behind the scenes that I really can't share you know, publicly with everybody uh, because of the nature of the underground church, the persecuted church, and these sort of things. And so my, ultimately, my heart is to be able to do more of the leadership training and this sort of thing, um, and so ideally to cut back at least a bit on all of the just extensive traveling. Um, you know, my heart's in all of it, of course, but um, I just, you know, with the family and so forth, that you just can't do it. So with that said, um, I do have a handful of projects that I'm looking forward to jumping into, and I want to share with you all. Um, but ideally, if I can get these projects done this year accomplished, or, you know, this year over the next year, uh, without having to travel quite as much, um, that would just be so much better on my, my health, my family, uh, just in every which way. So the first project that I'm really looking forward to, the first uh, trip that I have, the, tri- the next major trip, you know, I've got a handful of other events coming up in between now and then, but is to visit with the leaders of the underground church in the Middle East. And many of you who saw the film Sheep Among Wolves, um, we interviewed some of these different leaders. Um, these are key, um, key leaders leading one of the most dramatic, um, powerful movements Uh, explosive growth in the underground church, really in the world. And it's my honor, my privilege, and just a blessing to be able to spend some time with them every year. Again, teaching, praying, ministering, and just building those relationships. And so in the midst of doing that, we will be filming for the film Sheep Among Wolves Part 2. I'm not sure exactly when the release date for that will be, but we are beginning to film for that. So that's a big uh, project that I have coming up. I won't tell you where it is, um, but, you know, essentially when you're traveling to 
the other side of the world, you end up with a couple days of travel on both ends of the trip and then spend uh, a few days with the leaders. It ends up always ends up being at least a week uh, gone. And so that's a pretty significant trip, uh, an important trip. Ask for your prayers over that. Uh, another major project that we have coming up in partnership, again, with FAI, Frontier Alliance International, uh, Dalton Thomas and the whole crew there is we are already in the process of filming for Covenant and Controversy Part 3. So many of you have already seen Part 1 and Part 2, um, but there'll be various trips and so forth to get the interviews and the B-roll and all of these things for Part 3, which is due to be released later this year. So that's another uh, significant trip coming up. Uh, another issue, of course, which we've talked about already quite a bit uh, on the program here is the annual One King Intensive Conference Tour in Jerusalem. So this will be the One King 2017, and this is something that I'm uh, really looking forward to as well. This is uh, Samuel Whitfield, uh, myself, Stuart Greaves, Jay Thomas, worship leader, and, and a handful of other leaders from throughout uh, Israel, Arab leaders, Israeli messianic leaders, um, to equip the, the uh, leaders of the next generation, to equip young people and, and key leaders concerning this critical issue of the controversy of Zion as a rejection of the ongoing calling and election of Israel explodes across the body of Christ, particularly among millennials. Many young seminarians today believe that the Palestinian cause is the newest sort of hip uh, cause of justice du jour of the day, so to speak. And it's critical that the younger generation is indeed equipped with a balanced, healthy, biblical perspective. So this is something that that we don't just look forward to, but something that we're committed to doing annually to sort of fight the good fight on behalf of God's elect. And in terms of just equipping and empowering the church to know how to walk these things out in the days ahead. Now that said, with regard to um, tours in Israel, this is something that a lot of ministers do each year, and it actually becomes a big part of their uh, annual salary, so to speak, you know, bringing 100 people over to Israel and doing the tour and this sort of thing. Um, we are not doing this. This is not part of our annual salary. We're not doing this to make money. This is something that we as voices and leaders are committed to doing. And this is why we've uh, you know, got the prices so low for the tour because we're not doing this, uh, you know, sort of as a, as a, a paid gig, so to speak. Again, this is something that we believe is critical. So with that said, we, you know, largely are raising much of the funds to make this all happen. And so between all of these projects, um, I've got other projects as well. Um, there's another significant evangelistic project that I'll, I'll uh, let you know about, but between all of these things, these are things that we need to raise the money for. You know, with regard to the films that we uh, create with FAI, the way that we always do these is we, as, you know, filmmakers, just individuals, we raise the money ourselves. We pay for the plane tickets, we pay for the travel, all of the equipment, the production time. This is all something that just comes out of our pockets. And then we put the film online as a pay-per-view film. We sell the DVDs, really, at just a, a very small markup. And this is just to try to recoup some of, and again, just some of the production costs. But then after you know two months or so, we just put the films out there for free. You can watch Covenant Controversy Part 1, Part 2. You can watch Sheep Among Wolves online, on YouTube, on Vimeo. And this is because, again, this is critical information. It's just simply too sacred. We want the body of Christ. We want... The, the, the brethren to have access to this information. But again, in order to make it happen, we have to raise the funds. And so, you know, it's not something that I commonly do, but I would like to appeal to you all. Do consider becoming a regular supporter. Um, over the past year or so since I've been doing the underground, I have made it my primary purpose to emphasize um, calling attention to other ministries, ministries that I believe in wholeheartedly, that I stand behind. And many of you have been valiant. Um, you know, there has been through this, uh, through this program and through my website, Joel's Trumpet, there has been a lot of money that has been raised for the underground persecuted church, for the work of God there in the Middle East. Um, 
But I've been very reticent to actually just request money on my own behalf. But really, in order to do what I'm doing, I do need regular supporters. Um, I do need partners that would consider becoming monthly supporters. If that's a small amount, if that's a significant amount, every bit helps. And again, that frees me up to be able to continue to write and to teach and to do all the things that I am passionate about without burnout. So um, again, without, you know... um, elaborating on this too much or or belaboring this too much, do consider becoming a regular partner. Um, You know, if you can only make a one-time offering, that's fantastic. If you can only make a small monthly donation, that's okay. But every little bit counts, and we genuinely, genuinely, I mean deeply from the bottom of our hearts, appreciate this. So, amen. What is the other project uh, that I did want to mention, the evangelistic project? Well, Many of you are familiar with Ray Comfort, uh, Living Water Ministries. So Ray is this just fantastic evangelist. Many of you know him. Uh, I believe he lives there at like Long Beach, California, or someplace out there near LA. And essentially what he does is, I mean, he goes to different places, but he goes out there among the people with the camera, with the microphone, and in a very Socratic method, he engages popular culture with... Um, evangelistic questions. When I say Socratic, the idea is that he asks questions, the purpose of which is to lead people to come to their own conclusions. Conclusions which are true, but conclusions which he has predetermined he wants them to come to. And so he's produced a um, a handful of fantastic evangelistic little sort of uh, programs, documentaries, He has a very similar model in terms of putting the information out there for free, uh, selling it initially, making it available if someone wants to donate to contribute to the production cost, but also putting it out there. Now, one of the things that Ray has not done, or at least that I have not seen done by anyone else, are very similar um, programs to what Ray does, focused exclusively and specifically on Muslims from a domestic perspective, here in the United States, Canada, North America. Uh, We have millions of Muslims that live here in the United States, and of course we have more that are coming and growing. Um, There's no question at all that we, as the local body of Christ, are called to reach them. You know, it's one thing to pray and say, Lord, we want to reach the Muslims that are in the Middle East. We want to see your gospel go forward. But by and large, we're not sending the nearly the number of missionaries that we need to And then the Lord sends them here, and we're still not reaching them. Uh, While there are obviously some groups that are being evangelistic uh, toward the Islamic, toward the Muslim community, by and large, much of the church today is somewhat overwhelmed with much more of a fear and hatred. And so my heart with all of this is to help the body of Christ here in the United States to see and recognize that Muslims are people just like you and me. And yes, there's always a percentage that are dangerous, that are radical and all of these things. But I want people to see how approachable, how, how, how easy it is to actually engage in the important conversations with Muslims and how much many of them love the opportunity to talk about these things. Um, But beyond that, also to give people what I call conversational pathways, which is to say simple uh, conversational bridges in order to be able to open up conversations with Muslims concerning the gospel, concerning the things that we have been entrusted to communicate by our master, by our Lord. Amen. So that's another huge project that I'm, I'm, you know, I've had it really on my heart for a few years, and I'm hoping that this is the year that I can begin doing that. Now, again, of course, to uh, you know, create such a project, it's multiple plane tickets and traveling, and um, a pretty minimal camera crew. We, we able, we're, we manage to do things um, really on a shoestring, um, but there are costs involved, and then production costs, and then you know, once you get there, then there's all sorts of different things from the cover of the DVDs and all those things that have to be created. So again, do consider becoming a regular supporter, and by the grace of God, I'm hoping that. At least the projects that we've discussed so far, these are things that we can continue um, in the years ahead. Uh, I I just believe these are critical times. I just feel an urgency on all of these things. And the Lord has really blessed us to... um, to be able to put our hands to the plow. So any any bit that you're able to partner with is, is just, as I said, deeply appreciated. Now, here's the announcement, the announcement that I've really been looking forward to. And I've announced it already on my website, but I haven't actually announced it here on the underground. Um, but I am 
very excited to say that I have finally released my new book, Mystery Babylon, Unlocking the Bible's Greatest Prophetic Mystery. Now, this is a book that I have been working on now for over 10 years. So some of you who have been uh, following my ministry for a longer time now, you're aware, going all the way back, uh, Islamic Antichrist, which is my first book, went on to become a New York Times bestseller, has really made a major impact on the body of Christ, particularly uh, the community, those that are giving themselves, paying attention to the subject of biblical prophecy. Well, it was shortly after I wrote Islamic Antichrist that I began working on this book, Mystery Babylon, uh, because the the fact of the matter is it, it became very, very clear very quickly that you can't simply discuss the topic of the role of Islam in the end times with regard to the issue of the nature of the Antichrist and his system if you don't also address the topic of Mystery Babylon. And this is based on the longest prophecy, by the way, in the New Testament, Revelation 17 and 18, and it actually extends a bit into chapter 19. And so this really is, I guess I'll kind of call it the the creme de la creme or the the final frontier of biblical prophecy. And so there are numerous discussions and books and um, so forth out there, discussions concerning the nature of the Antichrist. Will he come out of the Islamic world? Will he come out of the Roman Empire? Is he more Catholic or humanist? And all of these things. And obviously I've, I've made my opinion known. Um, But really the missing piece of the puzzle is this issue of Mystery Babylon. What is the identity of this great harlot, this incredibly mysterious entity that's spoken of in Revelation 17 and 18? And so I began working on this book over 10 years ago. Uh, It was interesting when I started pulling out the manuscript and I was looking back at some of the original files. I mean, they went back 11 years um, that I started writing down all these things and sort of putting putting my thoughts to to paper, if you will, to digital paper. But each time I wrote a bit, I felt as though I had a check from the Lord. It was not yet time. And so it was not until last year, 2016, that I finally felt not just the release uh, from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit, but I felt an urgency. I just felt the fire, you know, under my feet, so to speak, to get this thing done. And so I sat down and sort of collated all of the various chapters and articles and different things that I'd put together and finally got this information together. Now, what we're going to do is just take a few minutes and we're going to look at the trailer uh, that was created for the book and then we'll be right back.
right. Well, I hope you uh, you enjoyed that. Uh, that was created, by the way, by George Escobar. He's the uh, the video producer for WND, uh, which is my publisher, which published Mystery Babylon. And I think George did a great job. Obviously, watching the trailer uh, gives you a pretty clear indicator as to where I'm coming from uh, with my interpretation. Now, let me just say this with regard to uh, the issue of Mystery Babylon. Um, This is a topic, this is a subject of which people are incredibly opinionated. Uh, So, you know, there is a contingency of folks out there, for instance, that believes that Mystery Babylon is New York City or the United States. Um, Simply since mentioning that I've released the book on my website, I've had maybe a dozen comments, and I don't post comments from folks that are just arguing or, you know, looking for a platform to express their their uh, sort of, you know, forceful, unique opinions on my website. But I've probably had about a dozen people that have just said, you're so stupid, Joel. Anybody who knows anything, you know, who can just simply look at the text knows it's the United States case closed, dummy, you know, sort of thing. And, um, you know, that's pretty strong opinion. I mean, I'm slightly exaggerating, but not by much. Um, Then I've had a handful of people very similarly who have made comments, uh, you know, either on Twitter or on my website saying, Joel, you know, case closed. Mystery Babylon is Jerusalem. Everyone knows that. And other people have said it's clearly Rome. No one would have understood it differently and this sort of thing. So this is a, uh, a, a, a prophecy which is incredibly controversial. Now, what I'm obviously suggesting is that Mystery Babylon, the solution to this great mystery, is in fact the city of Mecca in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Now, this is, of course, the great city of idolatry in our day. It's really the greatest city of idolatry that has ever been known to man. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia is the primary financier of radical Islam all over the world. The city of Mecca really is the, the mother, if you will, of all of the disparate various radical forms of Islam and really every other form of Islam throughout the world. This is the, the very womb, if you will, from which... Islam was birthed into the earth, and today it's the city that 1.6 plus billion people bow and pray toward that shrine in Mecca every every day. And so, you know, just right off the top, there are many reasons, just on the surface, just initial glance, there are many reasons to go, okay, I understand what you're saying, Joel, but nevertheless, it's not really a position which has been widely Uh, disseminated or considered throughout the body of Christ throughout history. Now, let me just say this. I am, in many ways, I'm a very skeptical person. And what I mean by that is, and I believe that a healthy measure of skepticism is necessary to be a responsible and healthy Berean, which we are all called to be Bereans. Um, And so as much as I value, and let me just say this, as much as I value the voice of the Holy Spirit to guide me into all truth. Jesus promised, after I go, I'm going to give you the promise of the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. As much as I value and and believe in and trust the Holy Spirit to guide me as I diligently give myself to the study of God's Word, I think it's essential that all of us have enough humility to also highly regard the voice of the Holy Spirit in his church down through history, in his in his people, in his body down through history. And so one of the first things that I always do whenever I begin studying a passage is I begin weighing and surveying the broad consensus and various ideas that, that believers have held down through history. Um, And so, of course, you know, Mystery Babylon, Mecca, Saudi Arabia, this is not something that has been widely held. Uh, Nevertheless, whenever any particular tradition doesn't line up with Scripture, then that tradition needs to be disregarded. Tradition is a a very important thing. It's, It's a powerful thing. And I value tradition. I mean, the purpose of tradition, ultimately... Is, is the very godly, it has the very godly goal of passing on and preserving truth to the next generation. So as tradition is passed on from one generation to the next generation, orthodoxy, truth, is preserved. That's the purpose of tradition. Now, oftentimes, traditions which are not in alignment with Scripture, they can become uh, calcified dogma, right? And so when tradition does not line up with scripture, then we disregard it. But we don't just simply disregard something because it's tradition. Paul himself valued tradition. Tradition is important. 
uh, for anybody who's seen Fiddler on the Roof, you know, tradition. Um, I love tradition. Nevertheless, as I said, if something doesn't line up with the text, after carefully weighing it, we have to be bold enough to say, the scriptures don't teach this. And so after weighing all of the various options, all of the various interpretations, I'm convinced that the case for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the city of Mecca, the case for this as the solution, as the as ultimately the, the solution to this prophetic puzzle of Revelation 17 and 18, this great prophecy, this, this prophecy which almost brings about the culmination of the whole Bible, the, the conclusion of the, of the New Testament, the conclusion of the whole Bible, the case for this is actually amazingly sound. And so I believe that uh, many of you after giving the book uh, its serious consideration, really working through the, the information carefully, will agree that um, this is not a novel idea. Yes, it's fairly new within Christian history and interpretation, but it is not an oddball, strange, sort of new sensational prophetic uh, concept. Uh, I've approached it in a very reasonable, sound, non-sensational manner, and I trust that you all appreciate it. Now, what we've done, uh, as I always try to do, is whenever we have uh, resources and new information, I try to package it. You can go on my website and get the book just as the book. And, of course, when you get it through my website, I sign it. You get a signed copy. I always joke. I say you can get an extra dollar for it on eBay that way. Um, But also, it blesses my ministry. It helps the ministry. So I always appreciate it. I'm not quite as fast as Amazon Prime, but if you get it through my website, you know, you do get the signed copy, and I always try to keep the prices down. Um, But beyond just getting the book, what I've also done is put together what I think is an incredibly important bundle, um, and that is not just Mystery Babylon, my book, but also another book called The Babylon Connection. And this is by uh, the Reverend uh, Ralph Woodrow. Um, This is such an important book that so few people have read, um, because one of the issues that I deal with in the book is I deal with the extra-biblical traditions of Nimrod. Now, within the Protestant community, particularly those that are studying biblical prophecy, these extra-biblical traditions, and I really work through all of these traditions, their sources, their history, when did they start, where did they come from? These particular traditions have made a profound impact on the the thought process of Protestants, particularly with regard to Roman Catholicism. And this is essential information. So I've put together not just Mystery Babylon, but also the Babylon Connection. And I bought a hundred of these. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get any more. I may. Um, but you know, this is, it's kind of a, a book that is, um, it's an older book and yet it's an important book and it's self-published. I don't know how many are going to be floating around out there. And then the other, uh, item that we throw in the other resource is again, my debate, which I did in August with Dr. Tommy Ice, do the scriptures teach a Roman or a Muslim Antichrist. And this was a two hour and 45 minute debate, really kind of a historical debate because, um, you know, there have been many critics and so forth, but Tommy is the first one that was willing to sort of put his his words, uh, put his money where his mouth was, so to speak, and sit down and actually debate the topic. And I think we had a good time. I think it was, you know, a, a an edifying uh, time between, you know, as we gathered together around the word to discuss these things. So all three of these things are available together. Uh, on my website, go to joelstrumpet.com, click on the store. And actually, I don't think I have this in the store yet. Um, it's one of the, the top posts on my website, and I think we're calling it the, uh, the Babylon Bundle. So say that with a Jamaican accent. It's the the Babylon Bundle. So put those all together. Great resources. Listen, friends, um, I think that's just about all the time that we have for this week. Um, Do keep my ministry in prayer. Keep my family in prayer. We have a busy, exciting year ahead of us. And uh, I just want to thank you so much all for your support. But uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week. I'm Joel Richardson, and this is The Underground.